we're still in Sedona. We're still at the airport and we have another fun video for you. Another one. Another one. Have you ever had a day where despite your best efforts, the pickup prints just don't come out the way that you had planned? That Don't forget the clapper. <gasps> ah! Action. action. Sorry. Okay, no, you can't do action. You can't take action until the clapper says action. Do it again now. And action. action. Okay. Okay. All right. Sticky stuff. Pick up prints. Have you ever had a day when <laughs> despite <laughs> what? That you're saying it again. I, I take two. Go. No. Take three. Now. <laughs> now it's take three. Do you want me to do the clapper again? No. It's okay. Have I messed up your thing? I win. <laughs> <laughs> We are so bad. We are. Uh, clap, clap. Okay. All right. Pick up prints. Pick up prints. Have you ever had a day where they just don't go to plan? Well, we figured out, actually, I can't take credit. Elizabeth figured out that if you had a way, and we do this sometimes, we'll clean a plate with packing tape, and then we realized we were throwing away all this really good grunge and patterns and stuff. And so, yeah, we talked about another way to do a pickup print, and that was her idea. Well, it really kind of came from my students, I have to say. Okay. Because I teach everybody to clean the plate with the packing tape, and always everybody would say, oh, what's on the tape is so beautiful, can we use it? And I would always say, no, because it's not gonna glue down because it's, because it's plastic tape, right. you know? So it was a bummer because a lot of the time that tape was beautiful. Yes, yeah. And really, then it was Barb's idea to use the sticky stuff instead of the tape. So it was a collaboration. Yeah, well, as always. As is everything. Yes, yeah. Well, and the thing about sticky stuff, sorry, there's so much wind here. Um, the thing about sticky stuff is, is that if you imagine it as a thin, thin film of sticky on both sides with release paper on both sides, if you peel the release paper off and you put that super sticky adhesive on the plate, it picks up like a dream. And it doesn't matter if you put too much paint down or not enough paint down or gel medium went wonky, it picks up every time. And when you, when you glue the sticky stuff or when you stick the sticky stuff down, it's perfectly flat. Yeah, that's the other thing. You, once you pick this up, in fact, let's show them what you oh, have. Oh yeah, here it is. So let me get rid of the clapper. Get rid of the clapper. I think I'll get rid of the clapper. So what you end up with is this is, you're gonna see in the video that Elizabeth is gonna put the stuff, the layers on the plate to create this. And this is a piece of sticky stuff. So the adhesive has picked up the paint. And now I have on the back, someplace here I started an edge. There now it is. I have on the back, if I peel this release paper off, she said while she peeled, this is sticky. Yeah. So I can, you can die cut this. You can lay it down as a big piece. Now we didn't have, because we can't bring our entire studios with us, I'm simulating a piece of, I think this is quarter inch. So we have sticky stuff available in a variety of widths on the roll. You can use a roll and make your own tape for borders. You can make wider tape for washi tape and it's self-adhesive. So it's, and washi tape honestly sometimes has a tendency to let go. This is one and done. When you put it down, it's not going anywhere. Yeah, that adhesive is strong and it's going it's gonna be nice and flat. And like you know with collage, if we if we do a big, big piece, it um buckles. Uh yes. but that self-adhesive it goes down really it flat. Carefully, I think you're gonna be fine. Yeah, it's gonna it's really nice. Yeah, so it was a good it was a good collaboration. Yes, it was. So all right, shall we go play? Yeah, let's all go right. show them how to do it. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna create a real cool collection of layers and patterns and marks on my gel plate for Barb to pull off with the sticky stuff. So I'm going to be using my six inch Speedball Deluxe Rubber Brayer, my mini ink blender tool, one of my long stem botanical foam stamps, my Summer Blossoms stencil design, a Posca paint pen, white PC3M tip, and three colors of paint. One that's opaque, one that's transparent, and one that is between the two. Half and half, partially opaque, partially transparent, something somewhere in the middle, okay? And I have today my eight by 10 gel plate. So I'm going to start with, um, well, what you need to understand is the first thing you that you put down when you pull the print, let's just pretend this is the sticky stuff. So when you put the sticky stuff and you pull the print, what shows up on the top, on the surface is the first layer you put down. So you want to be mindful in how you add these layers because what goes down first 
when you pull is going to be on top. So I'm going to start with just a little bit of doodling onto the plate with my Posca pen. I'm going to make some leaf patterns and um, know that that will be what is on top of the layer. So you have to sort of work that way. We also have to think about the transparency and the translucency of paint, understanding that the opaque paint is going to cover, is not going to let anything show through it. So we have to think about that. So I'm just doing a little doodling. Oh, it looks like my pen needs to be primed there a little bit better. And, you know, you can, you could uh, trace a stencil. Um, you could trace, if you don't know what you want to doodle, you could, of course, trace through the stencil. Uh, you could just make some fun lines or marks. Uh, this is just one part of the whole puzzle. So... And it's a little um, bit of fun because the serendipity of this, you don't, I never really know how any of this is going to show up when it prints. So I find that fun. Um, I find it fun too when you get the reveal that you don't really know um, how things are going to look. So here is my white layer of just doodles. Oh, Mark, get these a little darker um, that I'm going to start with. And that's going to, hopefully show up really well because it was the first layer um it should be on the top but remember you you might have to do this more than once and you may want to practice pulling it on paper until you get the hang of it okay so while that dries i'm going to then think about my color layers so i think i'm going to put my opaque color on I could do it last because then the other colors will show through themselves. I think I'll do it that way, but I also could put some of it on and it would be bold and solid and nothing would show through it. So that could be interesting too. So maybe I'll do that. And I think I'm going to do that with my foam stamp because this is a nice delicate pattern on my foam stamp. So it'll create some opaque uh, stuff and it'll help this delicate pattern to really stand strong because it's going to be opaque and uh, hopefully nothing else is going to show through it. So I'm just going to, I'm working on my non-stick craft mat. So I'm just going to put some of that out and I'm going to sort of brayer, brayer it so I can just dip the stamp in it. You can also use the brayer to apply it to the stamp like that but it is easy to just touch it into the nonstick craft mat. So either way that you want to do it. And then we're going to add that. And right now I'm just using the top of it. So I want to make sure I get a really a decent amount of paint on it. And I'm just going to stamp that. Remember, you need to leave room for the other patterns and the other layers. So I'm not going to stamp it, you know, everywhere, but I want to, and I like to go off the edge so I can get a full pattern on the plate. Now, when you're working with these stamps, you want to make sure that the paint doesn't dry on the surface. So if you want to keep going, I put a pile of wet paper towels down and then I put this foam stamp face down into the paper towel into the damp paper towels and that keeps the paint wet but because I'm done right now I'm just going to wipe this off with a wipe but the other thing you can do is you can have a, a dish basin of warm soapy water on your work surface and then when you're done you just toss this in it face down and that keeps the paint wet until you can wash it off so there's a couple of different ways to do it but you want to make sure that you do not let the paint the acrylic paint dry on the surface of the stamp so I think that's pretty good and also what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it down onto the surface like I would with a wet paper towel and that'll keep off to the side and that'll keep it damp until I can run it under the sink. Okay, so now you want to roll your brayer off so that it's clean. So I'm just going to roll that off onto a sheet of paper. Make sure I get all that color off. There we go. And the wonderful thing about this craft mat is we can clean that up pretty easily.
Okay. So while I did that, hopefully this paint has an opportunity to dry a little bit. And the marker, if you feel that the marker, it's pretty heavy right there and it's still wet. So give it some time. Um, I'm typically pretty impatient though. So, okay, the next thing I wanna do is to apply color through the stencil in some areas. And I'm gonna try not to mess up that one that's very wet. All right. So we'll put, again, put that out on the surface of the craft sheet. And I'm gonna apply with the mini ink blender and I'm just gonna go th dab through my flower pattern. And this is a totally translucent color. So that means that anything I put on top of it, uh, it, uh, sorry, anything I put on it on top of and on top of it, it's, it's going to be see through. So we will see patterns the next layer through it. Now I just, you know, messed that up, but that's kind of okay. It's going to be organic. I'm not looking for, um, you know, a crisp pattern because this is ultimately going to be used in a different way. So I'm just kind of coming along here and applying through the stencil. Look at how nice that is. And I think that's probably enough, but I want to do a little bit more that goes off the edges so I can get a complete pattern over the plate. So we'll do a little bit more. This one is um, permanent red violet. This one is vermilion. And the first one I used is turquoise blue. So let's go off the edge here a little bit. And then we're done with that. So the mini ink blender tool that has, if you're not familiar, it has the foam tip that pulls off and you can replace another one. Um, but you can also wash this out um, and reuse it. I'm just going to dab some of the paint off of it. And hopefully we can get that orange to not look too tinted by this magenta. Okay. Actually, Barb has some replacement foams here. So here's a nice clean replacement foam and I will rinse this one out. And this would be another thing that you would toss into your dish basin of warm soapy water so that the paint doesn't dry in it. Okay, so now I'm gonna go through the stencil with some of the vermilion. So I'm gonna put that out on the tabletop. So, for the project that we're doing, we need to make sure we cover actually the whole plate with paint. So I'm going to leave spaces, a little bit of space in between, because lastly, I'm going to brayer a color over the whole thing and then let it dry. So I can leave some spaces in between so that that color shows up a little bit. And the more space you leave in between, the more that color will show up. And I think I'm just going to use white over the surface so that it doesn't really change the color or affect the colors that I have put down first. So some of these we can blend into the magenta so it's not totally splotchy so that we kind of tie it together. And some I'll leave separate like this so they're bright and vibrant vermilion, but it's, you know, we could bring a little bit, kind of mix it in. Okay, so let's have a look at that. So beautiful. So the spaces in between are actually not only going to be created by how much uh, color you apply over the top of the stencil, but the stencil is giving us negative space in between. So when I say that, I mean clean, open areas of the gel plate. So let's make sure we get paint everywhere here. Okay, so we'll just clean that up. And now I'm gonna lift, and I have this great combination of the white Posca pen and the teal botanical foam stamp 
and the magenta and the vermilion pattern of the stencil. So now you're gonna let this dry completely. So don't be um, tempted to rush it because we're gonna bray or color over the whole thing. And uh, with the six inch brayer, very gently, we're gonna go over the whole thing and give it a final coat. But if you do that too soon, you're gonna smear this. So go get a cup of coffee, check your email, uh, walk the dog, and then come back and put that solid layer of paint over it. And then you'll wait again before you pull that print. Okay, so this is now all dry, and I thought I was gonna pull it with white, but then I thought if I let have Barb pull this with white, the white Posca pen that's in the open area will get absorbed by that and it won't show up. So here's where you really have to think about color. But I want the color uh, that is overall to be neutral so that it's not too crazy. And I want it to be light so that it really doesn't affect these colors. So the options that I thought would work to allow the white Posca pen to show up are this Persian Rose or Naples Yellow. And I'm kind of leaning more towards Persian Rose. I think, I just think it, the pink would be a little bit more harmonious. But either one of these colors would allow the Posca mark to show up and would be kind of a good base layer. So I'm going to go with the Persian Rose and I'm just going to put that on the plate and I'm gonna carefully and evenly spread it with my six inch brayer. Now I'd probably just put too much paint on there. And if you think that, um, if you do that, well, that's maybe not too bad. So I'll just roll the brayer off onto a paper uh, off camera and take some of the paint off the brayer and then the brayer will then pick up a little bit of paint off of this. And now I think I've done, maybe done a little bit too much so I'm just gonna add a little bit more back. Sometimes you have to do that. You want a nice thin layer. You don't want it to be too heavy, but you do want it to cover. So let's do a little more right here in the middle. And uh, we are in Sedona in Arizona, so everything dries pretty quick. But um, if you wanted to uh, set the base layer with a heat tool or a hair dryer because you couldn't wait, of course you could do that too. And this layer as well. So now we're gonna let this just dry and Barb's gonna take it from here. Elizabeth has shown you how she aggregated all of the stuff on here to create what ordinarily you would use as a pickup print. You'd layer another layer of paint on here or you'd put some gel medium down and then you'd pick it up. But we decided, because we use it, um, packing tape some of the time to help clean our plates off, and all of this great grunge or whatever it happens to be ends up getting tossed. So we thought, well, we gotta find a better way to clean the plate, but at the same time preserving what's there. And we started to play and we came up with this idea of using sticky stuff. Now, one thing that I did wanna show you, and neither of us thought about this till I picked the plate up to move it. As you accumulate all those layers, you can peek and see what you're gonna get because now you're looking at it from the other side and this is what you'll see. Obviously, this is what's on top, and you see that here is the background. So you can always take a peek like this and see how your layers are building. All right, so what I'm going to do is, you know that we have sticky stuff, and it's available in 6x12 and 6x6, and then we have it available in rolls of varying widths, I think from probably a quarter of an inch up to bigger than that, considerably bigger than that. And because we can't travel with everything that we would like to, what I did instead was I took one of these pieces of six by 12 and I cut it into strips of varying lengths, which essentially gives me what would be on a roll, except that it didn't come off of a roll. Now, the thing with this is that what you can create almost becomes like washi tape. And now you customize your washi tape. If you want to do this deliberately, you can build colors that work with whatever your project is, and you have plenty of options. You have plenty of different ways that you can pursue this to create your own washi tape. So I'm going to start, I'm going to go for the gusto, and I'm going to start with a big piece. So this is a piece that is six inches wide, and you can see that the little edge here that you pick up. So I measured from here to here, and I came up with 10, and hopefully I measured correctly. So what I'm going to do is put this down, and this stuff is wicked sticky. And I know I sound like I'm from the East Coast when I say that, and that's okay, because I'm in, you know, grew up on the East Coast. Did. Yes, we wonders. did. Yes, wicked we good. did. <laughs> wicked good. All right, so I didn't put that on there exactly right, but it's pretty darn close. Now, 
unlike, and some, let's just confess, there are days when I try to create a pickup print and the gel plate laughs at me and says, sorry, can't help you. Not gonna do this today. Maybe the humidity is right. Maybe the moon is not in Aquarius. I don't know, but sometimes it just doesn't work. I've put too much paint down. Anything is possible. So instead, what you have now is sticky stuff, which is incredibly sticky. So I'm not going to take the backing paper off of this side because I've obviously already removed it and put the sticky side down. What I'm going to do is start pulling from a corner here and holy moly, this stuff just grabs the paint. Now it's pulling a little bit away from the edge. So let's get this going like this. How pretty is that? Elizabeth really came up with a fun design. Now, there's a little spot right there that didn't pick up, so let's go back and press. And bingo, Squiffy, there that is. Now, if you get, maybe you haven't got solid coverage on your plate, all you have to do, because obviously this is gonna be sticky when you pull it off if you don't have paint on it, all you have to do is just take a little bit of paint and cover any areas that are sticky so that you don't cause this to stick to the next page in your journal or whatever it is that you're going to use it for. But how awesome is that? That's that the, is amazing. I know this is kind of like a, a, a wow, no. Wow, who can't, did that? You can't screw up a pickup print this way. Not to mention now the other side you can use to stick it down yes, perfectly I, flat. Now it's fiddly here because obviously it's just a layer of the sheet adhesive and Oh, good grief. No fingernails, no eye uh, no eyeballs that I can really see. What you have to do is you have to separate. Yeah, now I feel like a jerk. You have to be able to separate this backing paper from the film and the paint, and you have a self-adhesive sticker, which I'm not gonna try it. I'm not gonna waste your time. Let me try it with something else. So I've got this left here. I can grab I can grab another piece. Let's give this a try. And then we have a plate that Elizabeth was grunging up for me as we went along so that we could try it on something that was a little bit more like simulating when you're trying to clean a plate. All right. And that's how easy that is. Now, one of the ways that this is gonna be easier than the piece that I just did, see right there? There is the adhesive. So I can peel this back. Okay, so here's the film that is the adhesive, and I can trim this off. And when I peel this off, that's sticky and ready to go. So you have nothing that's going to interfere with how this goes down on whatever surface you put it on because sticky stuff is super adhesive. So let's play with this other plate for a second and just bring in the one that kind of is our pretend grunge. And like I said, we have sticky stuff as thin as a quarter of an inch. So if you wanna make really thin washi, all you do is reel off a piece as long as you want. And I'm just gonna lay this here like this. Go ahead and press. And then obviously this paint is a film on this plate. So I have to get that to separate and there you go. Now the edges are a little bit raggedy, but who cares? I don't need perfection. In fact, the more imperfect things are, the happier I am. But look at that. You get that really fun color com combination. Sometimes it's wicked grungy. Oh, I sound like an East Coast girl again. Sometimes it's wicked grungy. Sometimes it's a little bit more pattern oriented like this. But the idea that I can accomplish, I can kill two birds with one stone. I can clean my plate and I can not waste all the good grunge that's built up there, or I can deliberately create something like this that becomes self-adhesive. I find that a really attractive option. All right, so we hope that you're excited to see us again in Sedona. If you actually made it to the end of the video, sometimes they don't make it to the end of the video. And it's, you know, for those who don't stay, they lose the, the comedic goodbye, right? Yes, and sometimes we do it fairly well. And most of the time, it's a little bumble and stumble, but we're adorable. So just go with it, right? It's the, it's the wabi-sabi, the beauty of imperfection. That's right. That's we right. Are, I'm an excellent imperfectionist. Yes, and I'm a fantastic example of that. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll see you next time. Bye.